Hello, what it all. This is Luckless Love Locks. Welcome back to Withering Rooms. And I just did a little bit of combat practice before starting this second episode because uh, I'm still really not used to the controls. So I might do a little bit of practice between recordings. Um, and I also found this Ponser's Chess book. Uh, the reason why is just because it's a little bit awkward, the controls. Normally I wouldn't do that, but I'm just, I don't feel comfortable at all. And so I feel like I'm just going to die a lot in the same way. And uh, but I do I do want you guys to see me struggle through the game because that's kind of the point of these games is you you learn from your mistakes and then you adjust and you try again. OK, so Ponser's Chess one. Thank you for your purchase of Ponser's Chess, a unique and exciting new take on the classic game of chess. Before we explain how each unit works, you'll need to understand some terminology perception. As perception increases, the unit can see spirits from a further distance and detect increasingly sophisticated hexes and illusions. Poise. Units with higher poise are less likely to be stunned or knocked down by attacks. So you can knock people down. Speed. A speed value of 115 indicates the unit performs all actions 15% faster than normal. So 100 is 100%, 115 is 15%. Uh, 115%. Got it. A luck value of 200 indicates double the likelihood of finding rare or expensive items, as well as 10% more gold found. Now... Are those talking about the... Is there actually a, a chess game, or is that, like, our stats? Do we have stats? I know that the enemies had stats. Okay, but there's also Ponser's Chess too. Unlike traditional chess, where a piece is either alive or dead, units in Ponser's Chess can suffer from a variety of temporary afflictions. For example, the unit may receive bleeding damage until their bleeding tolerance is reached, at which point they will begin bleeding and will need to use a bandage to stop. The unit bleeds at a rate of one health points, uh, point per turn and leaves a bloody trail for 30 turns, or until they use an appropriate healing item. Poison. The unit is slowed by 25% and receives one health point of damage per turn for 30 turns, or until they use an appropriate healing item. Paralysis, the unit cannot move for five turns. Curse rot, inflicted when the unit reaches their curse tolerance. The unit rots internally at a rate of one health unit, uh, one health point per turn until a warning candle is used. So we don't just die when we uh, get maximum curse. It sounds like it's explaining the stuff that's gonna happen to us and the enemies okay let's take a look at our quests what do we want to do this time around meet margaret in the study find the first witch in the basement we need to get a some type of light source i think to go in the basement so i guess we want to meet margaret in the study and try to find that light source and i'd like to kill that that big enemy that we encountered can't remember is there anything else oh yeah there's the crafting of the spells which we already did okay so i think what we should do we should trap the door i think Is there an indication? Okay, question mark. That means there maybe there's something to find in there. Oh, that's freaking creepy. Can I can I stab you while you're sleeping? A strange coin. Actually, four of them. finger the other thing I'm, I'm not sure about is do the enemies respawn I think we probably saw that painting do that because yeah we're, we're pretty close to being cursed 
three blank scrolls. And we open these because once they're open, we can hide in them. Oh, Welsh Country House is two. Alfred Mostyn of Lancaster was born of modest means. He managed to build a coal mining empire after he... Why is it always coal miners? They have these creepy houses. After he was bequeathed a small plot in southeast Wales by his uncle. Like many newly rich, Alfred hoped for a more leisurely aristocratic life for his children. So off went his twins Peter and Priscilla to England for a proper education. In 1869, Mostyn started construction on a country home, halfway between the mine and Oxford, where Peter was pursuing a classics degree. Peek from here, too. And those icons are gone. Okay, so let's go over to the study. <laughs> I, I don't like you. Is this is this where that big dude was? No, okay. Safe spot. I wasn't expecting to see you so soon. I believe you'll do well in the dream. Let me give you a little gift. This is an old ring of mine. If you die in the dream, you'll lose most of your items. But some blessed items like this ring will survive from night to night. Now that you're acquainted with magic, I have a favor to ask. There is a powerful artifact in the Mostyn mausoleum that may be the key to escaping the dream. The last person seen there was the Butcher Surgeon. I, I don't like that. He's a repugnant man my father hired to help with research in the dream. I've heard he was seen in the mausoleum recently, searching for corpses to anatomize. He spends most of his time in the basement studying corpses in the kitchen. There's some, there's some, uh, a little bit of Little Nightmares vibe to this too. Um, a little bit of the design. The way that the uh, mansion looks, but also some of the enemies. As you are much more able with magic than I, can you venture down there and see if you can find anything out? Be careful, he's a truly odious and unpredictable man. Also, have you taken a close look at the curio cabinet in the occult library? Lots of interesting objects in there. Um, did we? Margaret? <laughs> what can I tell you about myself? I can't remember if we talked to her about this stuff. I don't think we did. My father is Dr. Robert Blackett, famed American physician turned Welsh asylum owner. Have you heard of the composer Johann Sebastian Bach? He's my father's favorite. Bach was given a near impossible task by King Frederick of Prussia. Devise the accompaniment to a complicated melody on the spot. You see, King Frederick loved to humiliate visitors to his court in this way, by having them fail at something they were supposedly excellent at. Bach completed the task, much to the amazement of everyone in the room. When I first started learning how to play the piano at the age of eight, my father gave me the same challenge. In fact, he gave me that same challenge every day for four years. When finally I had learned enough counterpoint to complete the challenge, he congratulated me for taking four years to match what Bach had done in a single night. My father always aspired to match the achievements of his heroes. He just never realized that his hero was really King Frederick, not Bach. Uh, there's a check mark when we've talked to her about something. I never knew my mother. I was born in China in the wake of the Second Opium War. My father says she died in childbirth, but I'm not sure I believe him. I don't think it matters much. The only thing my mother gave me was this face, which was not always an asset growing up in England. Holy shit. Looks kind of hot to me. Future. My father wishes to pursue a full-time study of the dream. 
As such, I'll become the only administrator of the asylum. As for the dream, you can say, it has existed for at least 18 years. I suspect it will be with us forever. 18 years. I only hope my father's research will find a way to banish these wretched living corpses. Ah, okay, there we go. Ask the butcher surgeon in the kitchen about Mostin Mausoleum. Spirits Theory and Practice 1. The enigmatic Miles Creighton, researcher into the unexplained, gave us the following five fundamental traits of spirits. Typically confined to the room in which they died, number one. Number two, cannot be harmed or manipulated through physical mechanisms. So she's a spirit? Not the, those corpses aren't spirits. We can't attack them. That's what number two means. Number three, have been known to attack the living, sometimes causing paralysis. Four, exercise limited influence over the physical world, making small objects float. Okay, maybe this is something we haven't encountered yet. Like, maybe it's the thing, maybe the spirits that's making the painting go crooked. Visible only in mirrors or to those who are highly spiritually attuned. Two more creepy dolls. So stuff is getting like restocked. Welsh Country Houses 3. Alfred Moston was fond of saying he was an 18th century man born in the 19th century. I imagine the way it works is if you complete a quest or something, the stuff gets restocked. Thus, uh, Moston House, well fitted with the latest technology like gas lighting, had a distinctly Baroque sensibility. Notoriously thrifty, Alfred filled the estate with replicas of expensive paintings and plaster copies of famous statues. Upon its opening in 1871, early visitors split on whether the interior was beautiful or tasteless. While Alfred was away during the summer of 1872, disgruntled mine workers burnt his primary Merthyr Tidfil. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right. Residence of the ground. Worse still, his sister was inside and perished in the fire. We heard about a fire before. Having put nearly all his financial resources into the construction of Mostyn House, Alfred had no choice but to move full-time into his country house. Other terrible events soon followed. Let me take a look at my, my items now. E sterile key, occult library key, basic grimoire, right? Strange bedroom key. We have a lot of coins. Oh, she gave us a ring too, right? Margaret's ring. An elegant ivory ring worn by Margaret Blackett, co-administrator of Mostyn Private Asylum. One learns to be comfortable with loss in the dream, which is a bit odd considering the dream is a place of immortality. Ah, max health and bleeding resistance. How many rings can we equip, I wonder? Looks like we maintained our max health. I imagine it's a good idea to peek every time, right, before we go in. They did say to, she did say to go to the occult library. Where's that big dude? No ghost in the mirror. Uh, this is, isn't this where we started? Yeah, okay. Grandfather clock, there's a keyhole in the front. Guess you don't have the key for that. We haven't have we been in the banquet hall? Where is that big guy? You you guys remember that guy from the last one, right?
clothes. Could hide in there. Uh, scone. Is that a better healing item than what we have equipped? Hundred percent. Okay. Let's keep the first aid quit. Uh, <laughs> kit. <laughs> I guess I could use this just to heal up. Is there a, a place where I can just see my stats? Oh, right here. The the <laughs> the part that says stats. Thirty-five of sixty health. So let's uh, let's use that. Wonderful. Perception 229, poise. Is that minus 25 or 25? Speed 100, luck 115. Time spent hiding, a minute six, kills three, items found 53. Difficulty standard. Okay. The other thing I'm curious about, guys, is let me know, but uh, I, I looked up the early access and it's actually the entire game they just want it to be an early access to balance things out so maybe i'll do one or two runs and then wait for the early access to be done so that's a is that one of the ghosts I don't know if I should be. Well, I think, I think I should find out what happens. Right? So just so um, if I take curse damage or something. Warding candle. Spells nearby magical trap. Trap. Spirits and enchanted armor cannot pass by while it burns. So maybe what I should do is have this. at left oh it's a creepy statue okay where'd it go there it is Oh, I see it. It hit me. Okay, I can't... Wait, it's a status effect. What's that status effect? Where do I see... Is that... Slow or something? Okay, I don't know how to deal with these guys, so let's get out of here. <laughs> I don't know how to kill them. Um, distraction. Maybe I have to hide and let them pass. Hex. Curse damage. Mm. 
Great. Um, stop peeking. Okay. Still getting adjusted to these controls. I should take her out, shouldn't I? Look like there's anything in there, though. Let's go to the occult library. I should be able to craft some more spells. Another armor spell. Just cast one of each. Oh, maybe that was a hint about the uh, combat practice that she was giving me. That makes sense. So if I... So forget that. Let's remember the ring. That seems more valuable. How did you get oh, shit! <laughs> oh. Oh, that scared the hell out of me, guys. Um, How do I want to deal with her? enemies. I kind of want to take her out. Spirit for five seconds. Spirits cannot be seen or harmed. Okay, let's use that. My spirit? Who is this now? Oh, I don't think I used it. <laughs> Whoa! Ah, okay. Oh, I can't leave though. Okay. She's stuck in there? I don't think so, right? Anything changed in here? This is my chill spot. I do have a bunch of coins, so maybe there's something I could buy from him. Good evening! Is there a torch or something? Save your ring. Ancient Byzantine ring. Any damage received by the wearer has a chance to be halved. The chance scales with luck. What was that little yellow flash just now? How curious. 7% chance. Uh, crit ring. 7% chance of doubling damage dealt. Black cross ring, max health plus 10%, max curse tolerance plus 10%. Grandfather clock key. Uh, let's get that, sure. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't really paying attention to how much stuff cost that costs. Firework. Okay. I guess that means like shop there? Next to the person? 
or something to unlock? I don't know. You set the clock to 30 seconds to midnight. This is to distract. Don't set. Okay, that's not what I expected, but interesting. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh yeah, there's an anvil for crafting, and I wonder if that other thing means there's an enemy? So how does, uh... How does this spell work? Door hex spell. Must be near a closed door. And then I can place the doll there or something? She's not gonna. She's not gonna check it out here, right? Because the doors close. Okay. What if I go into the to the hexed door? Is it gonna kill us, or does it only kill the monsters? Should we try? So much <gasps> A little rat snacking. It's not hexed anymore. Okay. So I think we do what we do is we put this down. Oh, I can pick it back up. Okay, good. We would we would um go in, cast the hex, put the doll, and then go and hide. I guess. Oh, okay, 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 okay. It's not it's not looking nice in here. <laughs> let's let's use a candle. Oh god. Oh, that's so neat. This is such a cool game. So maybe we don't have to kill enemies to proceed. I probably have to get past that ghost. And then the guest bedroom has something. To pick up, I think.
Maybe I need to be in like the spirit form. And then this is East Stairwell Key. That's to the basement. Red wax. Fireworks. I wonder if I could chop through that with the axe or something. Oh, it goes outside. Let's go. The Night Mother remembers we are her bricks, and blood is her mortar. Plus one item remembrance slot. Remembered one of two. Oh, okay, okay, so I can pick something else also. What has been really rare? The first, the fireworks, is the knife like something? It's the only weapon we've gotten so far, but there was the ax. I guess I'll, I, I just feel like they're going to give me a knife every time, but maybe if they don't, I'll remember that. I don't know what I'm going to encounter here, so I think I should be sneaking. Oh, look, a chess piece. A pawn. Oh, they mentioned the, uh, hedge maze. Are you... Oh, he's got a lantern. I think you're an enemy, right? Speak! I swear the church was this way, but there is only a wall. Oh, do forgive me. Sometimes I forget that I am in this damnable shadow world rather than the real one. Vicar of St. Elise. I am the Vicar of St. Elise, the nearby parish church. Or at least it used to be nearby. It feels like it has been so long since I've seen it. He's got some sweet armor. Can I borrow that? Never mind all that. You've been in the house recently. Positively reeking with evil, isn't it? I'm glad I didn't stab him in the back, but I don't think I could anyways. As a warrior of Christ, I had once thought to save the poor souls in there. Now I wish only to escape. You may think it cowardly, but spend a few more nights here and you'll see. How can I help? The lamp. I see you staring at my lamp. I would be happy to give it to you. But I need proof that you are a valiant warrior of Christ. What, me sneaking up with you with a knife in my hand isn't proof enough? And not in league with the foul beasts in that house. Bring me the corrupted heart of one of those hefty, poison-spewing, sheet-covered abominations in there. Do you have proof of your intent? No. Larger poison zombies. The basement. The basement is absolutely boiling with sinful characters. For one, there's the first witch and her initiates. Do not, under any circumstances, be tempted to join her foul coven. I believe the dream is a test from God to see how we might behave given eternal life. Harnessing the power of demons to cast spells does not sound like the sort of activity that would please our Lord and Savior. Secondly, the foul butcher surgeon resides down there. A despicable man. I've seen him go in and out of the hedge maze several times. He claims to be searching must in mausoleum for corpses to anatomize. What is his real intention? I don't know, but you should ask him if you see him. 
The hedge maze. The Mostyn hedge maze used to be one of my favorite spots for contemplation. It seems to have been hexed recently as I simply cannot find a way through anymore. Seeing through such illusions requires one to be significantly cursed, something I personally cannot abide. Whoever is in there does not want visitors! The Boston Mausoleum sits in the center of the maze. Perhaps whoever hexed the hedge maze has discovered something there? Spirits. In the dream, spirits are tricky fellows to deal with. One cannot even see them unless cursed, and being cursed is a rather unpleasant state to be in. In the real world, I rely upon my trusty Bible for protection, but in the dream, surprisingly, a camera is the best weapon. They say a photograph can capture a person's soul. Well, here in the dream, that seems to be true, at least for these damnable phantoms that flit about. Cameras are rare. I did see a girl about your age with one the other night, though. Maybe it was us. <laughs> she took my picture and said she was going to sell it to the man in the mirror. Absolutely awful rocker, I think. She looked hideously cursed as well. No doubt she was seeing things. So we need to be cursed to talk to the man in the mirror. And also, to do well in the maze, it sounds like. Or, or can't we just shank him and take his, <laughs> his lantern? I guess not. Okay, so to recap, we have to uh, find the first witch in the basement. In order to get in the basement, we need the lantern. The lantern is... The priest has the lantern. Uh, the butcher goes in and out of the maze. And the maze requires us to be cursed, it sounds like. Uh, the vicar wants a corrupted heart so we can get the lantern so he can go in the basement. So you need to find a larger poison zombie. And the man in the mirror might have the camera, but we have to be cursed to speak to them. And he wants pictures of people, so. I'm assuming the man in the mirror is... Oh, shoot. Well, I wanted to get cursed. He's in the strange bedroom? Probably this mirror, right? So, let's get cursed! Do I have to be max cursed? Oh, there we go. Enter portal to nowhere. Yes? Portal to hallway strange bedroom. Portal to hallway painting gallery. Oh. A new arrival. It has been a while. I'd introduce myself, but I'm afraid I've forgotten who I was. Lord Nobody of Nowhere. One visitor gave me the honorific Lord Nobody of Nowhere. I quite like that title. I'm afraid to find out who I was before. Perhaps I wasn't a good person. I still faintly remember things, smells, tastes, an uncanny sense of having seen something before. That's why I enjoy photographs. They bring back so many feelings. Have you ever used a camera? It's quite simple, really. If you'd like, I have a beautiful antique camera for sale. I'd give it to you for free, but I need coins. 
You see, I cannot leave this place. So I purchase photos from budding photographers such as yourself. As such, you'll be able to make back the purchase price of the camera in no time, I'm sure. Got any photos? How much does it cost? Shoot. So we need the camera, a fine camera, prime it and take pictures with care. Photographing a spirit will trap them. What is Daffod doing in this picture? He's supposed to be laying traps for these cursed rodents. Not peering through windows. And then we've got dry plates, which is an ammunition. A thoroughly modern photographic plate with a camera can be used to create curiously vibrant photographs. She produces the most haunting photographs. Claims they're real ghosts. Looks like somebody wearing a rag over their face to me. But I won't deny they are quite stirring. They both cost five. Man, I blew all of my money. I didn't think there would be another shop. Okay, so I need three more coins. Well. Wait. Yeah, that's, that's the number. Have zero. I need ten more coins, really. It's beautiful. This, you asked him about nowhere. It's beautiful, isn't it? No better place to spend eternity, I think. It helps that nowhere is a crossroads of sorts, so I'm often meeting new people. Nowhere is the only place in the dream you can get to from everywhere. You can get to nowhere from everywhere. Sounds like life. Initially, it was just me, and then my trusty crow flew in from one of the portals. I've given him many names. I can't seem to remember any of them for very long. Whoa! Sometimes, later, uh, sometime later, that old bag over there wandered in from who knows where. I think those red ones are probably locked off. I can't stand her, but what can I do? She's so old that if I threw her through one of those portals, she turned to dust. Let's talk about the red door. I'm not sure where that door leads. It's always locked. Once long ago, I saw a rather harried young woman go through that door. Never seen her before or after. Occasionally, the most strange odors come from the door. It's also hot to the touch sometimes. Maybe it goes to the past when the, the fire happens? Sometimes in life, I find it's best not to ask too many questions. What about spirits? When you take a picture of a spirit, you capture its soul in the photograph. A girl about your age wearing a mask sold me a whole pile of photos of spirits. There they are in the background, I guess. Said she was on her way to Mustin Mausoleum to protect something. Wonder what happened to her. Hallway guest bedroom? Oh, lower nowhere. Can I talk to you? Oh, now you look familiar. No, I suppose not. Haven't had a visitor in a while and I guess I'm overexcited. My name is Rose. Don't remember much else but my first name. So that will have to do. But don't take this the wrong way. But you seem like the type of girl who carries around a lot of junk she doesn't need. Am I right? I love junk. It's the only thing keeping me sane in this starry purgatory. Well, somewhat sane. Better than Mr. Photographs over there, at least. I've got a heap. I've got a heaping mound of coins. So if you have any extra items, I'll happily take them off your hands. Cool. Um. Oh, that's worth three. That's worth five. One. Well, um, I need, I need ten. 
so I don't think I really want to sell anything yet. So we'll be able to get what I want without selling everything. Let's talk. Let's talk Rose about nowhere. Can't see too well anymore, but the twinkling lights are still beautiful. One of these days, I need to purchase a telescope and have a proper look at them. Maybe they're not even stars. Everything in this nightmare is a fake, isn't it? I pass my time here, resting my old bones and waiting for visitors like yourself. Unlike Lord Pictures over there, I don't want to look at photographs. They make me too sad! <laughs> what about Rose? Oh, about her. Who am I? Fine question. I have a few clues. My hands are virtually crippled with arthritis, so I suppose I spent my youth doing something ridiculous with them. Maybe I was a seamstress. Isn't that just like something... Arthritis is just something you can get regardless of what you did with your hands. Like, it's genetic, isn't it? Most of my face was rotted, so it's hard to tell what I once looked like. But there is something distinct about my eyes. Perhaps I had a French mother? I like to think I was beautiful in my youth. And will believe so until someone presents some real evidence that I wasn't. Junk. A young girl like you shouldn't be running around with a bunch of silly trinkets clanging around in her pockets. I'm asking a pile of baubles and gim... Gim cracks? I never heard that one before. Is an old lady sport? <laughs> It's interesting because in, in games like this, I never use the items I collect because I'm like, I got to save them for a boss fight. And then I kill the boss and I'm like, I just keep amassing items. Although I've gotten better at not hoarding items uh, since I started streaming. I purchased many strange and unique items over the years. I bought a pair of spectacles right off a young man's face. He was in dire need of coin and seemingly in quite a hurry. I bought a terrarium with a real spider inside from a filthy man wearing a sheet. I bought a necklace made of fingers from a frightening young woman in rags. I even once purchased a pair of trousers from a young man with a dog, mostly so he'd have to take them off. Don't tell Mr. Photographs about that one. Okay. Didn't mean to do that. It's the end of nowhere. Let's go through this door. Uh, we can peek, but we can't open it. Okay, well, I guess I want to go back to the strange bedroom and see if we can get past this ghost. Does it cost to use the branch? 15 curse damage. And I only have one of these candles left. I should be able to see the ghost though, right? It could sneak past this time. Do the ghosts care about the dolls and stuff? Um, okay, old. We're gonna find out.
What if I do... Am I going to be able to see this thing walk by? I don't like this. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that. Pick it up. Shoot, was I able to search some of this stuff? No, 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 go in. Oh, this looks so different. There's that frickin' thing. That totally looks like an enemy from, uh, from Bloodborne. It's not... Maybe? Maybe I can use the clock to get... That thing to leave? Uh, another game this uh, reminds me of is uh, The Sexy Brutale. He's still here, huh? Does he look, did they look any different? Ah, okay. Keenings are all different and stuff. Cool. I just want to look down this hallway just to see what things, see, this wasn't here before. Chocolate cake. I just want to see what's changed. Oh, man. <laughs> I kind of want to go into the maze now. Also, does he have anything different to say now that I look like this? No. Okay, let's go into the hedge maze and just see what's going on there. Whoa! What? I'm... Oh, I'm curse rotted. Okay. Maybe I should have used that in there. Okay. I don't think it's time. I think I need to kill one of those. I think I need to go into the basement. So I have to take out that poison dude. But am I going to be able to see them now? Is 
this one, right? No. She's in there. I think I need to be... Interesting. I think I need to be cursed in order to see that one. No, there they are. Okay, um... Let's try some other things. I want to close this. Can I remove a door curse thing? So this is the first run, so you know I'm like I'm learning stuff. What? Oh, what? Uh, whoops. Uh oh. I think I screwed up, guys. Uh, I... Did, did they open the door or something? I don't know what happened there. Can I... Can I do anything about the curse rot? Now? It doesn't hear the curse rot thing. Health tonic. I guess I just heal. Hold on, there is some, some stuff about Curse Rod, right? Curse Rot. Inflicted when the unit reaches their curse tolerance. Unit rots internally at a rate of one health per turn until a warding candle is used. I have to use a warding candle. Uh, so I have to buy one. Really screw that up. And there's a bit of uh, a different configuration. Well, I learned a lot that time around. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to do more than more than one run of this game. Unless you guys think it's worth waiting till the early access is over. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, I'm going to wrap this one up here, though. I'll see you uh, maybe on the next one. Um, it's just, there's a lot. Okay. So before the thing I wanted to talk about is before I had to have the door closed to put the thing on it and then the door like just opened. So then I tried to close it so that it could work on the creature, but then it blew it up in my face. So I don't know if that was really my fault or if it was a bug. Just want to be clear about that. It's not like I didn't try to go through the door there. I just tried to close it. Because I wasn't sure if the, the uh, seal applied, because I didn't see it on the door and before it said it had to be closed to cast it. Anyways, even though it seemed like I cast it, I just didn't, wasn't sure what happened there. And now I understand that you need the candle. And I think I have a better idea of the order of things. So I guess the other question is, like, do I... So I have these rings. 
and I, I kept the knife and I had the keys and I have all the knowledge so all that stuff carries over uh what about the quests oh and the quests carry over too okay so we can just carry on I'm a little bit confused at what I guess we just lose the items then that we had which I had used most up anyways okay that's not bad. Let me know what you guys think of the game in the comment section. I'll see you on the next one. And I love you all.